I'm Jay Hunter. I'm working on a project called the Golden Beetle. There's 77 of these. I start with violets and then build it up with almost a furniture dye in gold. We've got a whole collection of them over here. Normally framed in 24 karat gold. These are moths from a project called Drawn to the Flame. We sort of go in pairs oftentimes like this. And then we've got a project here called the Fallen Black and White Graphic Work. It's tar on gesso. And then um, we just did this piece here in a real large scale uh, for Beverly Hills Garden House on Wilshire Boulevard. And this is the Instagram and the broker information if anyone's interested oh, there. Santa Monica. It's great meeting you. Santa oh. Monica's beautiful. Love painting yeah. here. Where are you Fantastic. from? I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. So yeah, are you traveling around the country Cleveland. now or? Yeah. My studio is based out of Arkansas. I just love the country and the quiet life. When you go to the cities, it's fun, but it's nice to retreat out into nature. So <laughs> really enjoy that. How long you got here in Santa Monica for? Um, I think they extended my meetings. We have to do a event in Hollywood. So I'm here through next week and then I'm headed to the Bay with all the pieces we've been making. So do you have a show up there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, showing some meetings. We're presenting this to a couple of vendors for um, a show in Hong Kong. So, yeah, it's Thank exciting. You. Thank you. You gotta keep this wet and sun. That's the other thing. Most of this stuff is all mixed media, whereas I'm strictly classical oil with the other figure there. Um, so yeah, it dries super fast. I'll just go back in for my darkest points that I want to get. But even this isn't black. This is like what you'd use in furniture restoration as a furniture dye. But I love its clarity. Like, look at how, look at how clear it is. It looks black. Oh, that's and a, look at how beautiful that yeah. amber is. Almost looks like a brown. Right, right. Yeah, it's like golden amber brown. And so I think it it behaves as a nice, like darkest value for me. When did you start painting? Um, about, I would say five years old and started selling at 13. Um, so I've been doing it my whole life. And then someone said I should go into architecture for a more clear uh, future. And I did that. So uh, I'm in structural engineering as well. And on the side, I design bunkers and uh, astrological observatories for a private group of clients. And that's my studio in the South, same thing. It's like. Um, one room is just for the dogs and a fireplace. The next room is just for a dining. The next room is like a tower that's stacked. The next room is where my Mason Hamlin and my music parlor is. The next room is a uh, resting quarters. And then the top is a canopy balcony to watch storms roll in over the mountains. And then the top is an astrological observatory. So we go up about, on average, steel and concrete, reinforced steel concrete, um, like maybe 80 feet or so it's really is that where you live really fun it's, yeah when i'm not when i'm not traveling yeah that's where i my retreat now and did you go to college like to, for architecture for, for architecture oh. and architectural engineering yeah but i do the consultation on the design and then i hire architects and structural engineers to ensure everything so you're still doing that yeah that? yeah yeah but that's for a, a, a small select group of uh clientele <laughs> but yeah i really enjoy it but yeah that's what they said to do but i find painting is what I do a lot of. So I'll let this one dry. See, then I'll go back to stacking the different violets in this. See, that's just a sketch that doesn't even have the violet in it yet. And so I would scoop my violets in and just place the colors so that they still retain that, that chunky feel to it. And then I'll let it dry in the sun and dye it the same way. But in order to get those creams, I mix them like this, like a, just scoop it in there and stir it. And it's actually easier to hold it like this than it was to put it on the easel. Learn something new every day. But yeah, I love that stirred look, you know, there's that, you know. I normally, as a technique, like to keep my highlights a lot taller than my, my shadows. I still like chunky shadows, too. 
gives it a little more high, uh, contrast, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I'm working in the, yeah, it gives it a lift. So when you have a, like a highlighted area, it, like even in here, I want that to, sometimes I'll use a knife to put it on, but I want it to actually stand up proud, like kind of peak. It kind of makes it pop a little bit. Right, and right. so then when you hold it like this, then it actually protrudes sculpturally and catches that little bit of extra light. Um, so yeah, yeah, the highlights, you want them to stand up. I like it that way. And this is so much easier to hold the small ones in my hand and try and set it there. So you paint all different sizes? Yes, um, and first up, because of my like it, involvement in architecture and design and stuff, I truly like um, a large, interesting wall with a small piece on it. Just that juxtaposition of scale. Yes. I think it's phenomenal. And um, the negative so, space. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, like, once again, I, this isn't wet, so I can demonstrate with this. You know, if you went and. So I design a lot of my. I mean, I've worked in Louis XIV style, a lot of period design that would be considered classical architecture. But one of my favorite styles is brutalism. I just love it, especially with the concrete. So like a great example of, you know, like a brutalist installation would be taking something like this, put it into a classical kind of frame, and then taking it over to, you know, some sort of like a steel, you know, facade or whatever. And then when you have that there, instead of like just an unframed canvas, you have something like compressed in all that, as you said, negative space. And it just has an interesting juxtaposition, you know, all of this like industrialism mixed with, you know, right. classical style frame. Very nice. It doesn't have to be that frame. I mean, we do like sleek floater gold and stuff like that too, but it's just the client's pension. I like to travel with some display frames on hand, but all my work is sold on frame because normally we always do a consultation with the sale for their interior. A lot of people will want to switch it out from the gold to platinum. I always use gold just because I think it's sort of alchemical. If you take this out, like what world are you in? It's still in your world right here, right? It's right here in this world. But if you take the highest element, 24 karat gold, and surround it, it's now cut off from this world. And when you view that, you are now drawn into a separate world. So next time when you go to the Met, think about that as you're looking at all these frames it's not about being garish or gaudy it's literally there's something alchemical about it it's a vibration that separates this world and you're drawn into a painting uh -huh. so i highly consult with my clients 24 karat gold but you know sometimes people want like a platinum or a silver or something and it works i'll use black frames sometimes but most of the time it's always gold looks the best are those frames hard to get um i collect them at antique shops um, so you, there's like different styles. This is sort of like a Frank Lloyd Wright prairie design on the edge. This one's that like clean line, you know, just kind of a bead. And on this, we would normally just do a floater, which means there's a gap of about a three quarter inch. And then you'd have a bead of gold going around it. A lot of the pieces online, uh, J Hunter art are framed in floaters, but none of these are floaters. Do they still make these today? These type uh, of frames? The frames? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great places I use in, um, in in the desert. There's some good carvers in Texas that'll make them from scratch for me. We had to do um, one of the frames for the Triple Crown Room at the Derby, and it had to match once the last the Triple Crown horse came, and it had to match all the previous ones exactly, so we had to have it carved. And then my studio did the 24 karat gold on it and matched it to all of the frames from what was it 17 or 20 years ago from the previous Derby winner, so. so that, that could almost cost as much as the art, or? Frames oftentimes, yeah. I mean, some, sometimes my clients will get pieces in from Sotheby's and they have to spend more on it, getting it framed than, than the auction price. So yeah, that's a very common thing. You know, when, when you're going with something carved and then the, the, the gold, gold, you know, there's just a lot of painstaking work that goes into the water gilding. So, you know. But yeah, I think framing it and positioning it is a big part of it. And that, that's why size is so interesting. You know, doing the smaller pieces allows a designer or an architect or you know a, a client 
to phrase a wall in such a way if I painted everything in the same size that I don't have as broad of a vocabulary, even if it's the same image. You know, there's something about changing that size. Like this on a wall is so different. The exact same motif. We're installing one of these in LA and it's this big and it's the exact same construction. It just feels so different. And then we're doing another one up in New York, a seven foot by nine foot. And that feels completely different than this tiny one. It's almost like compressing the energy, you know, into this one little snip as opposed to just this broad spectrum to, to view. So I, I do think the size is important on it. And then the frame, you know, the presentation, the framing of it. Um, some of my pieces, I, I, some of them are not even framed. I just leave it loose canvas and my clients hang it like tapestry. Oh yeah. Right. You know, the edges kind of are yeah. unfinished and curl out. Nice. So that's also an option. I think that's also very, that goes really well with brutalism. You know, a large a weathered concrete facade and then just that almost like a tapestry style hang of the canvas on it without it being mounted or stretched. Um, so I think that's another way of presenting the work that's very avant-garde. So. You ever go down to Venice? The beach? Yeah, Venice Beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is a different vibe though. Yeah. <laughs> it's very peaceful. Do you like it over there? Oh yeah, I find it. Yeah, I do. It's entertaining. I like to see the art on the on the boardwalk. Gotcha. My son's a, a bodybuilder, and so he um, uh, he said to say hi as well. He texted me this morning out here. He had an early training session. He's like, say something nice to someone out there and say, I said hi. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's um, competing now, he's 18. And yeah, he he would live at Venice. Has he been to Venice? To no, the Gold he's, or not, no. he's gotta come there. No, I know, right? No, he wouldn't leave. <laughs>